Baptist Church with our congregation. Uh, as Pastor Porter said, as some of you may already know, I am Jasmine Smothers. I'm here visiting from Columbia, Maryland. And the first thing I would like for you all to do with me is just bow your head and pray. Father God, I come to you right now in this moment, thanking you for allowing me to be here in order to speak to this crowd today, Lord. As I stand here, I am no longer a motivational speaker, but I am an inspirational speaker today, God. As I speak your word to the crowd, I pray that you fill me up, God, with your Holy Spirit, with your wisdom and your words, and you allow whoever needs to hear this message to be filled with your spirit as well, God. I thank you for your grace, your kindness, your mercy, and your love, and I ask that you be with me as I stand here and just deliver your word today. Amen. Amen. Uh, so when I... When I signed up to do this, I thought that I was coming just to tell you who I am and to deliver a speech, but I feel as if God is standing me up here to de deliver a message today. So I uh, yesterday, my, my family kept asking me, Jasmine, you get up there, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? You know, you, you do this all the time, so it'll probably just come to you. And I stood there and I said, maybe I should sit down and take a couple of notes because I don't know what I'm going to say. And the reason why I had to take those notes was because there's more that I'm going to say to you today than the fact of the matter, which is that I'm a motivational speaker, I'm an author, I've done all these things before, but today I want to let you know that this is not about me, Amen. but this is about God. This is about the person that has taken over, the God that has controlled the journey that I am on, the person that I have turned my life over to in order to hear and to understand what my purpose in this world is. Um, so, like Pastor said, I'm now 23. I think the last time I stood up here was when uh, Miss Michelle Moore used to tell me that I could sing and she knew she was wrong. But, but I stood up here proudly and I used to sing those words as loud as I could, even though I couldn't sing. And most of my friends here can uh, testify to that because she told all of us we could sing. And mm -hmm. That wasn't the truth. So, I'm glad to be here. Um, and I want to let you guys know that when I was here back in 2014, I was suffering with something. And um, a lot of people are afraid of the words depression and anxiety and all those words that the devil uses to describe us when we feel as if we have no other way to go. Uh, and I was suffering with this something and a lot of my peers and my teachers would tell me that I need the word help. And um, they would tell me that the doctors could help me. They would tell me that the therapist could help me. They would tell me that all these people could help me. And I sat right in this church and I never realized that the only person that could really help me was looking over me as I stood inside this church. So it got to the point where um, I'm now a mother of a two-year-old little boy. I am an entrepreneur, I am an author, I'm a motivational speaker, I volunteer at my son's school weekly to work with the other children. God has me doing all of these things, and I feel as if I can't do it on my own. So um, as of last year, I became a member, by the grace of God, of the church known as St. John Baptist Church down in Columbia, Maryland, where, again, I had given my life over to God. I, woke, I walked up during that benediction, and I gave my life over to God again at the age of 22 because I cannot do this on my own. Uh, yes, so um, on this journey that I'm on, there are the days when I feel as if I'm not going to make it. There are those days when I tell myself this is too hard. I'm 23 and I feel as if I've been living since I don't even know when. I have this old soul already and I'm already tired and, you know, it's a good thing some days, but other days I'm like, Lord, I'm just getting started. Why am I so tired? And, you know, God, he He speaks to me often. You know, we have those days where we say, I don't know who that is telling me to do that, but I'm not doing that. I am not comfortable with doing that. And then we have those days where we say, oh, that sounds good. I want to do that because it makes me comfortable. And I feel like that's where I'm supposed to be doing. But both sides can confuse us, especially at the ages that we're at. We're only, you know, from the age of 18 to about maybe 23, 25, and we're going to college and we're doing all these things and our parents want us to go here and do this and you can't do this without doing that and you gotta do this and you gotta maintain this and you got bills and you got all these things that's starting to add up at the age of 18 and 23. We are tired. I don't know about you all, but I'm tired, and I'm trying. I am trying my best to not be so tired and to complain, because the old people are looking at me and they're saying, girl, you ain't tired yet. You ain't nowhere near tired yet. But I am tired, and I can say that I'm tired because God is using me. He is using me, and now that I have 
turn my life over to him, it has become better and easier. It has become to the point where I feel as if I'm doing something not for myself but for somebody else. I have become selfless. I'm no longer selfish. It's no longer about me and what I can do, but it's about what God is using me to do. Yes, so um, I, I've written down three scriptures. Um, you know, all of us know the typical scriptures that everybody uses. Philippians 4, 13, we have, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Proverbs 3, 5, through 6, you know, you got to trust in the Lord and understand that he has something for you. You can be patient. We have all these scriptures, but the one that stood out to me the most this year was Jeremiah 29, 11. And that scripture there says, for I know the plans that I have for you to help you yep. and to prosper you. Yep. And I will not harm you. God will not harm you if you allow him to create the plan for you. So my friends, as you sit here and you listen to me, I want you to understand that you may have a plan. You may know that you want to be a veterinarian. You're going to medical school. Congratulations, Jasmine. You're going to medical school. You know that you want to be a doctor. All the rest of you are doing all these great things. But let me tell you something. God has a plan for you already, even though you're planning your path, your path has already been written for you. Yeah. And the closest thing you can do to managing your path and to understanding that God is with you is by turning your life over to him. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy. I know people stand up here all the time and they say the same things to you, but I am your peer. I am not an adult telling you what to do with your life, but I am your peer telling you that my success is not only my success, but it's God's success. He had, he's using me. And you guys see it on my social media. You see me doing all these great things, but it's not me. I can tell you, it is not me. I wake up and I, I turn everything over to God. I say, God, use me today. Do what you have to do in order for me to get to the message, in order for me to deliver the purpose that you have instilled in me today. And I wake up with a purpose each and every day. And I didn't plan to wake up with a purpose, but God tells me that I have a purpose in this world and I do as I am told. So I want you all to understand that when God has a plan for you, when you hear those voices that are telling you to do something that you think you cannot do, you can do it. Because nobody can tell you that you can't. And God will always make a way for you. And that is his word and not mine. It's written out for you. And I don't know how many of you study your Bibles. I don't know how many of you come to church on a regular, but you don't have to. These are things that you can talk about with God in privacy. You can be in your car. There's been many of times where I've been in my car and I said, God, I need you right now. You know, I need you. You can call on him at any time, any hour. When you're up doing that paper until 5 o'clock when you got class at 7 and you feel like you can't make it to class, and you're just going to skip it because, uh-uh, you ain't going. You can't make it. But you can make it because at the end of the day, there's only one person that is in control of where you are going and what you are going to do with your life. And if you allow him to guide and lead you, he will see you through it all. And I am a living testimony of that because, like I said, I am an author. I never thought I would be an author. That sounds crazy. People, Pastor Porter said that I'm going to be signing people's books. That is a beautiful thing, but it's not about me signing the books or the money that I get from it. It's about the message inside of that book that God helped me to create and break when I was up at 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock thinking and thinking about what I was going to put into a book, but the message came right to me because God had already written this book for me. And I just did what I was told and I came up with something better than I could have ever imagined. So I just want to encourage you guys, as you sit here and you listen to me and you look at me, I don't want you to look at me as somebody else that's coming up here just to tell you that God is real and God can do all things. But I'm telling you from personal experience that if you give your life over to God, it will get easier. When you feel like you can't go to your parents or anyone else, that's okay. You have a father, and his name is God. And he will be there for you. When you feel like you can't pursue anything, you can't keep going, the, your grades are starting to slip and fail, that's okay. Take a break. It's okay to take a break sometimes. When you feel like you can't go on anymore, you can go on, but you have to trust in God. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. That is the number one thing that I got out of this, this church right here. When you hold on to God's unchanging hand, it does not change. He will be there. And sometimes somebody instilled in me last year, and this has stuck with me for the rest of my life. When you do not see God standing beside you anymore, that is because that man is carrying you through. And you cannot see him, but he is still there. So trust it. Trust 
can believe that God is there and that he will do something for you, but you have to turn yourself over to him first because he will seek you and you can seek him too. But until you choose to actually hold on to his hand, he will allow you to go through what you're going through until you come to him and come on home and give him back your life. So I encourage you guys to do that today. And I'm going to leave you with one last scripture. And that scripture is Exodus 14, 14. This isn't something that we hear usually in our generation, but write it down, put it in your phone, do what you have to do. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. He will fight for you, but you must keep still. Be still. Do not overwhelm yourself. Do not stress yourself out. Do not try to keep up with everybody else that's doing something because most of those people were either, either given a silver spoon and it was already handed down to them or most of those people... They're just given the gift of gab, you know? And, and not everybody is living out the same purpose that you'll have. We all are one of a kind. You can have a twin sister or a brother, and you both are not the same. We all are one of a kind. So if you feel like you have a purpose in this world, if you feel like you want to do more than be that doctor, you want to do more than, you know, go to tech school, whatever it is that you're doing, if you feel like you have more of a purpose, then chase your dreams. Yeah. Do not be afraid and let no one tell you no, because God is the one that tells you yes, and he will be with you every step of the way. I want y'all to listen to me clearly and listen when I say that when you give your life over to God, he will promise you all kinds of things, but you have to be there. You have to show up. You cannot give it to God and say, oh, God's got it. I have no work to do. There is still work to be done when you give your life over to God, but you have to be continuous. You have to be consistent. And every day and every night, turn to the person that is start and put your feet on the ground in the morning and also lay your head to rest without any worries at night. Okay, so I just wanted to come up here to encourage you all to keep going. You're almost there. Half of you are, what, juniors, seniors, the freshmen starting out. Congratulations on your straight A's. It gets no better. I wish I could have did that, but I could not. But, you know, we all have our own gifts. So keep going. Keep going. If you feel like you're at your whip end today, if you sat down in here and you have so much on your mind and it's just heavy and you brought all that in here with you, when you walk out of this door, let it go. Because God is in here just moving with tears in your eyes and I don't know what you're going through but I want you to know that it's going to be okay and you are not alone yes. you are not alone God is with you every step of the way as in a, as am I I'm here for you I have not been around here very often I haven't been in the area but I'm here we have FaceTime I'm here today use me I'm here and I want to help you as much as I can thank y'all for having me today I pray that this message touched someone I don't know who but I really appreciate the opportunity to come up here and deliver the word of God as he had told me to do this morning. Thank you, congregation.